My name is Chris Hopwood. I'm a professor of personality psychology at the University of Zurich. I was born in Michigan. I spent my childhood in Michigan and California. Uh, I went to school in Michigan and Texas and in Boston, Massachusetts. Uh, my first job as a professor was at Michigan State University, and then I moved to the University of California in Davis, and then three years ago, with great fortune, I moved to Switzerland, University of Zurich. Is it possible to fundamentally change your personality traits? There's pretty good evidence that uh, personality does change. It changes more during certain life stages than others. Um, there's some limited evidence that people can change on purpose if they try. There's some evidence that people who go through certain kinds of experiences are likely to change uh, a little. Um, there's not a good reason to think that during adulthood, a person can change drastically to go from being, for example, very extroverted to very introverted or, or vice versa. But there is pretty good evidence that people can change somewhat. What do you think is the biggest myth about personality traits? That personality is stable. As I was saying, it's, it's uh, somewhat stable. Um, there are periods of the lifespan where it becomes more stable. Adulthood, middle adulthood in particular, is sort of the most stable period. Uh, for personality, but even there, some people can change in relatively dramatic ways, even if it doesn't change on average all that much. How does our personality change over the course of our lives? Yeah, most of the trait change happens during early adulthood, so the transition from being a teenager to a young adult. And during that time, uh, trait changes occur in the direction of greater adaptivity and maturity on average. So most people see increases in agreeableness, so they become more friendly, they get along with other people better. They see increases in conscientiousness, so they're more responsible, they show up to work on time, etc. And they become less neurotic, so they tend to have fewer negative emotions, are better able to regulate their emotions. These... Um, These changes make sense if you think about the changing roles that a person adopts as they move into adulthood, as they take on responsibilities in relationships, potentially as parents, in work, in careers. One needs to be able to regulate their emotions, get along with others, and be dependable. What is the Big Five model? So the Big Five model uh, proposes that five major traits can be used to distinguish one person from the next. Those traits are neuroticism, which has to do with how many negative emotions a person feels, uh, extroversion, which has to do with how many positive emotions people feel and how much they enjoy social activities, openness to experience, which has to do with sort of curiosity, creativity, um, agreeableness, which has to do with being warm and communal and friendly versus antagonistic and disagreeable, uh, and conscientiousness, which has to do with being impulsive and undependable and risk-taking on the one hand versus reliable and liking sort of regularity on the other. Uh, it also posits that these aren't the only traits. There are each one of the major traits can be broken down into different parts. For example, Uh, one part of agreeableness has more to do with being polite uh, in public. Another part has to do with being sort of compassionate and caring about people. And you can imagine a person who's, say, compassionate but not polite or vice versa. Um, the Big Five has been the dominant model in personality psychology for the last few generations of research. Um, it's by far the the best model in terms of existing evidence. We have a variety of good measures. We have evidence about how it changes over the lifespan. We have strong evidence about how heritable it is, how influenced it is by environmental and cultural factors. And we have strong evidence that it predicts important outcomes like health and relationships and work success well into the future. So it's a good model. It's the best thing we have, I would argue, right now as a sort of general model of personality. It has limitations. Uh, it's based almost exclusively on questionnaire data, mostly self-reported questionnaire data. It's based largely on a single statistical technique called factor analysis. Um, And so I wouldn't say that anybody in my field would argue that the Big Five uh, provides a complete portrait of human personality and can, can account for all the ways in which people differ from one another, but it's a tractable model, scientifically speaking, and so it's useful to us uh, for trying to understand people and predict their behavior. How do men and women differ in the Big Five? 
Yeah, the biggest differences in uh, in gender in the Big Five traits is a function of gender that women tend to be more agreeable than men on average, and that uh, women tend to be higher in neuroticism than men on average. I would say that although there are average differences between the genders, those differences are much smaller than the variation within each gender. So those distributions are a little different from one another, but it's not difficult to find uh, uh, an agreeable man or a neurotic man or vice versa, right? So um, there's a lot of variability across both genders and all the traits. How do our personality traits affect our political attitudes? Yeah, the biggest personality difference between left and right is openness to experience. People who are higher in openness to experience tend to vote more towards the left and people who are lower more towards the right. There are some other more minor effects. Part of being open to experience is being interested in diversity, not being interested in the same sorts of things that you're accustomed to. And, and one of the ways to think about conservatism is to think, well, we should keep things basically the way that they are. We should not invite different kinds of people into our country. We should not, um, we should not change institutions from the way that they've been because they're working fine. Whereas part of being on the left is let's try something different. Let's invite more people in who can bring something new to our society. So I think there's a natural connection between being more open and being more left versus being less open and being more right. All right, thank you very much. Cool.